So four years ago, we uh, made a couple of big decisions about the Sophie Kerr Prize. There were several changes. One of them was to take it off campus, but there were actually two other major changes. One of them was to separate it from commencement, and the other was to name finalists. So after giving the prize the same way for something like 35 years, we did a little assessing and a little thinking about um, what, we might, what we might do bring the prize into the 21st century and, and made a lot of changes. We tried two years in New York and uh, two years in Baltimore and had really a lovely experience with both of those, getting, getting a little more publicity for the prize, taking the students um, to some lovely places. Baltimore was especially hospitable, the Pratt Library, uh, they were wonderful hosts for the prize. But after four years on the road, we felt that it was time to bring Sophie back home and award it on campus. Uh, the separation from commencement has turned out to be a really good thing. This uh, prize is so large and it draws so much attention that we had felt for a long time that it got an out sh outsized share of attention on commencement. And that um, one student is ecstatic and 40 students who applied are devastated and 350 students have their day be about the Sophie Kerr Prize. So we really like separating it from commencement so the seniors can celebrate with each other and celebrate their families with or celebrate with their families so that this isn't really the focus of the day. Um, I'll note that we still give the check at commencement because Sophie's will is specific about that so a student will still receive the prize at commencement. Probably the most important change is the naming of the finalists. Um, with one student receiving such a large prize and the other students really never being recognized or knowing maybe how close they were to getting the prize, uh, we felt that we'd follow in the path of, of many other literary awards by naming finalists so that we could recognize, usually we name five, that number is not set in stone, but usually we name five finalists so that five students, five outstanding writers can all be recognized for the work that they did, the, the fantastic work that they did. Okay, so part of bringing the Sophie Kerr Prize home, a big part of it is recognizing that this prize uh, belongs to Washington College, belongs to, to the Eastern Shore. Sophie Kerr was a native of the Eastern Shore of Denton and she was given an honorary degree at Washington College on the same day that Eleanor Roosevelt was. She was recognized for her accomplishments and when she died she left her fortune to the college. So we're, we're excited to bring this prize home for the community. Um, attaching it to the commencement festivities, it's going to be awarded the night before commencement, really makes it a part of the final celebration, allows everybody to celebrate together, and allows the community at large, not just the Washington College community, but the Chestertown and the Eastern Shore community to be part of this, to participate. So the prize will be awarded on campus in the Decker Theater at the Gibson Arts Center on Friday, May the 15th at 7 p.m. The whole ceremony will take about an hour, but what will happen is our keynote speaker, who is a former Sophie Kerr Prize winner, Peter Turchi, who is a recognized novelist, will join us. He will be the master of ceremonies. He'll talk about the students and the writing, and he'll hold the important envelope. All five student finalists will read from their writing and then the announcement will be made. It will be followed by a reception. Uh, this is open. Anyone who'd like to attend, who'd like to celebrate with the students, who'd like to hear, hear the readings should come up to campus on that night. So Sophie Kerr is an Eastern Shore native. She grew up in Denton and eventually made her way to New York to become a writer. She is the author of 23 novels. Uh, 300 short stories, uh, a play that was made into a film. Uh, she was a literary editor and she really made, made her fortune as a writer. She was a well-known writer in the early part of the 20th century and when she was invited to Washington College to get an honorary degree, she apparently remembered this and remembered this day being honored with Eleanor Roosevelt and upon her death, she made a bequest to the college. So Sophie, Sophie left her money and specified that half of the earnings on this endowment would go to a student, would go to a graduating senior, man or woman, who exhibits the best promise for future literary endeavor. The other half of the endowment, uh, Sophie specified, would go to the English department to be used for scholarships, for library books, to establish uh, 
fund to bring in visiting writers, to fund student activities. And so I would think that that is the more important part. The prize is really splashy. It's a lot of, it's huge. It gets a lot of attention because it's so large. But the enrichment that the other half of the endowment provides every year is far more significant. It benefits more students. So every year three uh, students who are matriculating as freshmen are awarded Sophie Kerr scholarships and they keep that for all four years. So there are 12 students on campus who hold Sophie Kerr scholarships. Uh, a number of books have been purchased for the library, and we support a, a very significant reading series, bringing in seven, eight, nine, ten uh, readers every year. Uh, writers who are uh, emerging writers, people who've written maybe one book of fiction, one book of poetry, and very established writers, Pulitzer Prize winners, National Book Award winners. And these writers come to campus, they give a reading, they visit classes, they engage with students. So the opportunities that the other half of the endowment provides are the much more significant part. It's really been the bedrock of creating the literary community, the creative community that we have here.